today and for many years the most popular grape in the world has been Cabernet Sauvignon but Cabernet Sauvignon is nothing without the Godfather okay I promised my wife I wouldn't do that noise the whole time so uh, welcome to episode two of Morgan's Tasty Wine Notes. Today we talk about the Godfather, Cabernet Franc. In doing some auxiliary research, I am an expert. Don't get me wrong. But everybody needs a little freshening up. I found that Cabernet Franc had only been discovered as the parent of Cabernet Sauvignon in 1996 at the University of California, Davis. There are many, many theories throughout the years that I will not bore you with now for the sake of time and, uh, well, sleep. And uh, the bottom line is that Cabernet Sauvignon, which is very near and dear to most imbibing Americans, at least those that imbibe in wine, is that Cabernet Sauvignon is uh, the reigning dominant king of red wine in America and throughout the world. And I believe that is still statistically very true. But what I wanted to talk to you about today is the fact that Cabernet Sauvignon would not exist without Cabernet Franc just as any son would not exist without its father. Now, the genetic makeup of Cabernet Sauvignon becomes from two grapes. Not necessarily male and female, but two grapes nonetheless. One bit of information that I saw said, very matter-of-factly, that they believed it was a chance encounter. As if, perhaps, Sauvignon Blanc, the white grape, was just walking down the street and, you know, bumped in to Cabernet Franc to make Cabernet Sauvignon. Well, agriculturally speaking, it doesn't exactly happen that way. There's some grafting that goes on. There's some, you know, more farmy type things that happen, not just a chance encounter. But through extensive research, what I have found is that what really happened was that a farmer many, many, many years ago took Cabernet Franc and Sauvignon Blanc and put them together like this. This. And then they look pow! Cabernet Sauvignon. Now, again, I'm no farmer, but I do believe this to be true. I should have asked my farmers before, but I, I'm almost certain that is exactly what happened. This is how grafting works, see? And if you just let this marinate on the plate, for a day or nine months or something, and 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 be, then we get Cabernet Sauvignon. See, it's that simple. So, pardon my uh, just just. <clears throat> Excuse me. So today, we talk about the noble grape. Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc is a beautiful grape. It is uh, widely overlooked by the drinking public. Uh, it is a, a beautiful creature, and it deserves a lot of our attention. It makes great red wine. It makes great rosé. It is a fantastic blending agent in all wines uh, for its aromatic and tannic qualities. Uh, today, we are going to focus on none other than Covington Cellars, Cabernet Franc, of which we have 
two different offerings to go over with you uh, this evening. First, we are going to talk about our 2016 Franck. Uh, very straight and to the point, it's Franck. So we have this black label 2016 Franck for you to enjoy. Now, both of these are 100% varietal or 100% Cabernet Franc. Meaning we have put nothing but Cabernet Franc in these bottles. They come from some of our uh, esteemed farmers in and throughout uh, Washington State. Uh, this particular blend is from four different vineyards. Seven Hills, uh, Discovery, pardon my my forgetfulness. Uh, Stone Tree on the Waluk Slope and Deneen in the Yakima Valley. Cabernet Franc is uh, sometimes overlooked because it has vegetal qualities. Now that sounds bad, but vegetables are beautiful and great and we all eat them. Uh, sometimes Cabernet Franc can turn people off due to its uh, kind of green and bell pepper notes. Now in Washington State we have no problem getting these grapes ripe. Uh, and more fruit driven. Uh, however, I really like to pick them when they still have a bit of that uh, Cab Francness. You know, what you're tasting should taste like Cabernet Franc. The 2016 Franc was uh, fermented and then barrel aged in uh, about 50% new French oak. Mm raspberries, a little pencil lead. I know you chewed on a pencil when you were in school. And uh, I don't know, a little fl floral, a little violet maybe, tobacco for you smokers. Where's my cigar? Anyway, beautiful fruit, beautiful spice characteristics. You're going to love this. This is a this is a fantastic wine. Now I'm biased, and if you say anything, I'll squirt you with my gun. Okay, so it's good wine. For the first time ever, we have a reserve level Cabernet Franc. Now reserve can mean a lot of things. Sometimes it's how long it was fermented, or how long it was aged, or sometimes people just make it up. Actually. And just say reserve so they can charge more money. We didn't actually put reserve on the bottle. However, this is a very special Cabernet Franc. This comes from uh, four, no, sorry, nay, three different vineyards. Uh, as aforementioned, Deneen and Stone Tree, and also uh, there was one barrel of, um, uh, my apologies, Seven Hills also in this. And the major difference between this and the Franc is this was fermented entirely in Spanish clay. Uh, these are large vessels called teneja, or uh, more often referred to as amphora, depending on where they come from. Uh, so we crush the fruit and we put it in a clay pot and we let it ferment in that clay pot uh, and left it on the skins for an extended period of time. Uh, just like last week's episode when we talked about maceration, the time on the skins is the maceration level or the maceration time. So uh, in the case of the Teneja, we are letting the yeast, the native yeast, ferment the fruit. And so it takes a little bit longer and it's slower, cooler fermentation, which uh, most of those um, Fermentations, those four fermentations, took upwards of 21 to 28 days. So almost a month on the skins. And the Teneja is unfinished, fired, but unfinished, unglazed clay. And the clay gives the already spicy, aromatic, floral Cabernet Franc uh, a bit of just over earthiness really it's it kind of brings in this flavor of 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 kind of the, the the bank of a river you know like that clay earth smell 
Mm. And the extra time on the skins gives it a lot of uh, distinct spiciness that I think um, everybody's going to really appreciate. One other difference between the 2016 Franc and the 2016 Reserve Franc is that this label right here was designed, painted by a dear friend of mine named Brett Karen when he was in art school. He was kind enough to let us use his beautiful painting as a label. Also, shameless plug, Brett has uh, a pretty dope, do Godfathers say that? Anyway, has a pretty great uh, men's clothing store called Indigo and Cotton. I'll uh, throw that website up for you guys later if you need some fresh threads. Even though everybody's just wearing yoga pants and underwear right now, you should go get some, uh, some clothes from my boy Brett. Anyway, so without further ado, we do have our tonight's pairing. And while I am 100 and 50% French, of course, uh, being from Cabernet Franc. My heritage is really Italian, as you can see by this mustache, this hair, my wedding suit, this brooch right here from my Grandma Lee. We're going to pair this meal with this spicy Italian dish. So, mm. That's a spicy meatball. Have a good night.